Good afternoon. Let's do a better job with that, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. Okay, now an inauguration is certainly an investiture of a new president. But, and I appreciate that. But more important, it's really an affirmation of education's ideals and a celebration of the college itself and where we're headed next. Now, I'm going to thank lots of people because that's as it should be, but before I do that, I really want to speak to the entire community uh, just because I want to emphasize what a wonderful feeling of reception and support and friendship that I have received since I've become president. Now, I've been here for many years, as we've heard, but obviously taking in, stepping into this new job is, is a different and certainly a, a completely new experience for me. And I'm not only talking about the faculty and administrators, uh, certainly they've been great. Uh, the students, we had a wonderful pasta dinner for those of you who were there last Monday. Carmenza and I were there, we loved that, that was great. I'm going to look for many more opportunities to get to know our students. But I also want to talk about the people who make the college work. Colin Art, public safety, the wonderful staff that we have that does our, that does our facilities and maintenance, as well as all of the uh, staff who, who, who make our academic and administrators offices work. So I want to say thank you to that. It, it makes it it's a pleasure for me to walk into the college every day. It makes me feel like this is an institution that's really worth leading. But at the same time, it, it gives me motivation to try to do the best job that I can. So, so you've set that bar high for me, and I want you to know how much I appreciate that. Now, I want to start by thanking a particular group of people. This is an amazing event. Some of you have been here all week, right? We've had events every single day, and that's been put together by our event staff and our volunteers who have given their time. I'm amazed we can't walk through the streets without being guided by people. So please join me in thanking the volunteers who've made this possible. And now I have to talk about the people who have really brought me to this. And I have to start with my wife, Carmen Zagatlu. She's a fellow professor and social scientist who's repeatedly encouraged me to question my own assumptions and to think carefully, very carefully, before I act. Now, besides enjoying a really wonderful intellectual partnership over the last years that we've been together, uh, we also have some parallels in our career. 28 years ago, we were actually offered our academic jobs on the same day, or within a 24-hour period, and we started new careers. I started this in July, and, on, and, in, and in June, she started a new career as a, a docent at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So that adds to the interest of our discussions. So, Carmen said, thank you so much for all that we have done together. Now, my two daughters, Daniela, a TC alum, can I say go blue? Is that, is that? <laughs> and Erica, uh, both of them are educators, they're leaders. Now, at, at this stage in the parent-child relationship, the flow of advice uh, and counsel is no longer one way, that's for sure. But I think with these two, I think there's a lot more coming from the child to the parent than from the parent to the child. But I just have to say, the stakes are higher. There's a lot more people who are concerned about the wisdom of your advice than there was before. So keep that in mind. So thank you so much for all that I have learned from you. Thank you. Now, we've heard about my parents. Uh, they were Quakers. They devoted their life to their faith. And they did teach me uh, to listen, to seek consensus. Now, one of the bittersweet things about taking a job like this after both of your parents have passed away is that you don't get the pleasure of making the phone call, hey, mom and dad, I'm a college president. Now, I know that they would have been 
proud of me, my brother and sisters who are here, I think, can attest to that. I actually realized just today that the day I was appointed to this job would have been the 100th anniversary, the 100th birthday of my father. So. Now, of course, I have to acknowledge the Presidential Search Committee for their confidence, confidence in naming me to this job, and I pledge that I will do my best to justify that confidence. If you care about working for a thriving and just society where everyone can fulfill their potential and realize their dreams as I do, there can be no greater gift than the opportunity to lead Teachers College, and I'm enormously ex excited and grateful to take that on. I'm also deeply indebted to my recent predecessors, Michael Champagne, who unfortunately can't be here today, hired me at Teachers College. Arthur Levine has done many good things for the college, but what I thank him most for is that he helped me start the Community College Research Center. So Arthur, I will be forever indebted to you for the work that we did together on that. And Susan Furman, who gave CCRC and me personally so much support during the past 12 years. She's left TC in sound financial condition with much improved and in many cases beautiful physical spaces, an excellent faculty, increased student funding, and a solid partnership with the community that we have heard about today. Now for her, I say because of her, I have so many things I don't have to worry about. You're going you're gonna to get another opportunity because I want to say both of you have immeasurably added to CC's legacy of excellence and service. So now please rise so we can really thank you with our applause. <laughs> Now, I also want to thank Ali Bollinger, the president of Columbia University, who was here. Thank you so much. Believe me, I will uh, call you when I need you in those circumstances. I've told people who've made these promises not to make them lightly because they will be called on. So we certainly deeply value our membership in the Columbia community, and I will certainly do the best that I can and to work with Lee and everyone else to strengthen TC's relationship to the university. Now I want to thank all of our higher education colleagues, my family and friends who've traveled from near and far to be here today, including my dear friends Belinda Miles, Belinda, thank you, and Eli Ortiz who came all the way from California, thank you so much for your kind words, to Congressman Espiat, thank you, all right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Council Member Levine, thank you for your kind words, and I will definitely take you up on your promise to work with me. Also, to all my fellow presidents and senior education leaders who are here, I look forward to working together and accomplishing great things with you. Now, we've also seen today the advantage. We are a university. We have many, we have many different programs, but we have a great music education program. And today, you've seen the advantages of that. So thank you to all of our student alumni and alumni musicians for wonderful contributions to today's events. And also, <laughs> also I appreciate that my own piano teacher, Jay Jihei Hong Park, performed there. So I was a, that was a great treat for me. <clears throat> Now, there's no question that I stand here today because of the success of the Community College Research Center. We've already heard about that. Now, I'm very proud of that, that's for sure, but I did not do that alone. So to my fellow CCRCers past and present, thank you for coming together to make CCRC such a powerful engine of transformative work. You've certainly helped the world, but of course, you've also helped me personally. So I look forward to continue to working with you and doing what I can for CCRC and community colleges in my new position. Now finally, to the many community college faculty, staff and administrators and students 
we have worked with over the years. You've inspired me time and again with your courage and determination to overcome tough circumstances and financial constraints in order to achieve fundamental social goals. I just hope that I can live up to the potential that you exemplify. Please. So this brings me to what I want to talk about today. How can Teachers College live up to its potential to build smarter, more productive, and more just societies? How can we direct our great teaching and research enterprise towards creating a world with pathways for all to flourish? Now make no mistake, Teachers College stands at the forefront of new knowledge about learning and human development across the lifespan. TC has led though in so many areas of inquiry and practice, in education, in health, and in psychology. We are leaders in how to enhance the development of young children by understanding the role of family, neighborhoods, schools, and poverty from perspectives as varied as sociology, psychology, policy, and neuroscience. We are innovators in how to improve the learning of school-aged children from pedagogical approaches to literacy and the teaching of mathematical ideas to the role of hunger and health care to the importance of culture and identity in classrooms from the role of art and music to the role of technology. Now we've forged new paths in how to strengthen outcomes for post-secondary students by exploring how parents, schools, communities, and institutions encourage and inhibit attendance and success, how students learn best in college, and what the role of post-secondary institutions in our society should be. We have pioneered new strategies, methods, and interventions for improving the health and physical activity and functioning of all ages, whether that's improvement in speech, nutrition, physical coordination and fitness, or mental health. With many programs and initiatives, we have pointed the way to narrowing the growing racial, ethnic, and income gaps in success by developing culturally appropriate pedagogies and by identifying and challenging the policies and practices that disproportionately hurt students of color, low income, and LGBTQ students. And since TC was founded, we have worked to deepen and enrich the learning and development that takes place outside of formal institutions, in workplaces, houses of worship, social service offices, museums, governments, from corporations to refugee camps from Washington, D.C. to Nairobi to right here in Harlem. Clearly, we approach our overall mission with a strong foundation. Now the time has come to write a new chapter for Teachers College. First, because our nation and our world need our knowledge, expertise, and graduates more urgently than ever before. And second, because we face many challenges as an institution, we must summon the courage to make choices in order to take full advantage of all of our great strengths and flourish well into the future. Now, these are unquestionably troubling times. It's not a period of we, as it should be, but rather of us and of them. Worldwide, we are confronted by the worsening threat of climate change, by growing intolerance and othering of fellow human beings, by the rise of repressive regimes and the resulting brutal conflicts that have created the largest refugee population since World War II. In this country, the gap is widening between the haves and have-nots. Our schools have undergone, undergone a de facto resegregation along race and class lines, creating a two-tiered system with, that both reflects and reinforces social inequities. We are faced seemingly every day by widespread gun violence, by growing mean-spiritedness of our political and civic dialogue, and by the spread of hatred we are alarmed by the sharp rise in the number of crimes motivated by bias against people of color and religious minorities. 
At the same time, higher education is facing its own special challenges. We are seeing unprecedented skepticism about our value and purpose. Celebrated as society's most powerful engine for upward mobility, higher education in reality bestows much of its riches on the rich, while investing the least in institutions where students of color and low-income backgrounds are most likely to attend. A substantial portion of the country sees higher education as lacking intellectual diversity, while soaring student debt is falling most heavily on those students least able to pay it off. Now, many critics and citizens are asking, is college really worth it? Do public institutions deserve the funding that they receive? Do private colleges and universities earn the ever-increasing tuition that they charge? Now, we cannot wish away the challenges facing higher education, nor will the threats of our to our democracy, our health and well-being, and the future of the planet go away unless we all step up. Teachers College is poised to, to do its part. We have the tools to help address all of these problems. Indeed, it must be our mission, mission to do that, and we will. Let's do that. But in working to advance this mission, Teachers College and education schools in general are confronted by strong headwinds that make our efforts that much more difficult. We are often seen as part of the problem rather than leaders in finding solutions. The gatekeepers of an education system that is lagging behind those of other countries, that is failing to close the achievement gap, that is reinforcing mediocrity that it should be combating. Now, much of this criticism is erroneous and unfair. Nevertheless, the perception creates an environment in which we must operate. We face tough economic challenges as well, as teachers and others in social services and helping professions endure low pay, harsh working conditions. TC, like many education and professional schools, has experienced a decline in applications in some of our programs. For a tuition-dependent institution, these pressures compel us to re-examine our business model. We must ask, is it prudent to charge ever-increasing tuition to prepare students for teaching and social service occupation? Is it sustainable? Now, it is my passionate belief and my message to you today that the strategy for addressing our institutional and economic challenges and the strategy for increasing our effectiveness in reaching our social goals are one and the same. By building a stronger and more effective teachers college, we will strengthen our ability to help build a strong, stronger and more equitable society. And by truly marshalling our resources to achieve our broader social goals, we will become a stronger and more effective and more sustainable institution. Now, our, <clears throat> now, what are the specific elements of that common strategy? Now, in answering that question, I hope you'll forgive me for drawing on the experience of community colleges and our work at CCRC. As I said, that's why I'm here, so you shouldn't be surprised <laughs> if I talk about that. Now, my experience, uh, moreover, I, I, and besides that, I think that a graduate school at one of the, most, of the foremost universities in the world has a great deal to learn from the experience of community colleges. <laughs> Over the past 15 years, thousands of community college faculty, administrators, and staff have been working hard to improve student outcome, a movement often referred to as the completion agenda. While many individual reforms and experiments in remediation, counseling, financial aid, and funding systems produced some limited success, we were not seeing significant improvements in overall institutional or sector performance. It dawned on us our focus was too narrow. The problem was not just remedial education or student advising or funding incentives. It was all of those features put together, exposing the flaws in the overall structure and organization of the colleges. It wasn't that there were no effective reforms or that staff were not skilled and committed. 
but rather that the organization of most colleges did not allow those resources to be mobilized effectively. Nor did it facilitate collaboration across academic departments or between faculty and social services staff. Now, we referred to the college that had this type of dispersed organization as cafeteria colleges. There were lots of resources, but individual students, faculty, and advisors had to take the initiative on, by themselves to find their own pathways through complex environments and to use and mobilize the available resources effectively. In order to make in significant improvements in college and indeed in the sector's overall performance, the colleges needed to implement comprehensive institutional strategies. In community colleges, as we perceived the limitations of the cafeteria college, we looked for alternatives and developed, along with others, the Guided Pathways Framework. This comprehensive model redesigns academic programs and provides services to support students from application to graduation to employment. It's designed to promote communication and collaboration across and among academic and administrative departments. It provides a framework that colleges can adapt to their own circumstances. Now, more than 250 colleges, I guess many of them in California, but in many other states, <laughs> are implementing guided pathways. And while it's still early days, the early adopters are seeing significant improvements in first and second year student outcomes. Now, in addition to implications about the importance of comprehensive reform, I think we can draw lessons from the process we used to develop guided pathways. And I want to emphasize three points. Now, first, and I think this is very important, Guided Pathways is not something we dreamed up on our own. Rather, we formed working partnerships with policymakers, fellow reformers and researchers, and most important, practitioners at community colleges, presidents and deans, but also faculty members, guidance counselors, and students themselves. We came to understand their concerns and the realities that they dealt with every day, and learned some of the imaginative solutions that they were developing. We reflected back to them what they told us in a framework that pulled all of these elements together in ways that they could use. My second point, we also realized that we needed many perspectives and methodologies to address these issues. So we turned to our colleagues in other departments at TC and elsewhere, and we became a multidisciplinary center. Third, we became a learning community where all of us, students, faculty, researchers, and staff, were both learners and teachers. We learned not only about the substance of the work, but also about how to prepare projects, how to interact with funders and practitioners, how to work together. In short, CCRC, the CCRC experience demonstrated the power of we. Now, what can we at TC learn from this experience? Like the cafeteria colleges, we have many areas of excellence. But like the cafeteria colleges, we too are not optimally organized to take full advantage of the potential comprehensiveness of the excellence and diversity of our programs. Our structure can often can be confusing, which inhibits and often discourages collaborations across fields and disciplines. While we can potentially be a highly effective organization that encourages brilliant people to pool their ideas and efforts to achieve common aims, we more often resemble a loose federation of excellent but separate approaches. And we lose opportunities to develop comprehensive solutions to deep problems. We face similar barriers in our administrative structures. We have many excellent administrative staff and resources, but those resources are often dispersed among different offices and, and are difficult to use, sometimes leading to confusion, duplication, and unproductive efforts. I think that we can do better. How can we more effectively mobilize the assets and resources and services that we already have? Now, I'm proposing dare I say it, a guided pathways model for teachers' college. And, uh, 
and I want to emphasize five areas. First, we must make sure that our student pathways are well designed and supported. We must pay attention to the movement of students all the way from recruitment through programs and internships and practica to career services and placement. Many of us are already working on these, so there's much to build on. And our student pathways must extend beyond graduation so that we both continue to support our alumni in their career goals and progress and to draw on their experience and expertise. Now, we have already made great progress to deepen our relationships with passionate and accomplished alumni. And I'm ex I am excited to build on that. Second, we need to develop our many small programs so that they work in concert and are synchronized and conducted with refer reference to one another. That way, our programs will be more effective and easier to manage, making the college a place that our students and funders can better understand, navigate, and support. This will also help to assure the excellence and viability of our programs and, the, and strengthen the recruitment and continuous professional development of our faculty. Third, we need to strengthen our administrative structures, including our support for funded research. In order to assure that our excellent staff and resources are effectively mobilized and that students and professors can focus on the activities that they came here to carry out, their studies, teaching, and research. Fourth, <coughs> We should choose a small number of fundamental areas where there's great potential for translating productive multidisciplinary collaboration and, par and partnerships with practitioners into solutions to deep problems. I've already described the value of this approach for strengthening community college outcomes. Another possibility is to better coordinate and strengthen the many efforts we already are making to promote equity in education by combating the growing racial, ethnic, and income gaps in success. And we could consolidate our work on the physical and emotional health of students, families, and communities, or develop comprehensive strategies to our growing work in the field of citizen education and civic participation. These are only a few of the many possibilities. Fifth, I want to underscore the imperative of continuing to work with practitioners. Teachers College already has deep involvement in our own local community, and in general, our faculty already have extensive relationships with practitioners. Let us make those relationships even more effective and rewarding by working together. Now, over the next several months, I will be initi initiating community-wide conversations about how we might pro make progress on all of these areas. <laughs> but to accomplish all of this on a wide scale, each of us must think beyond our own programs and interests and work to promote the intellectual vi vitality and social well-being of the entire TC community and expertise. We must also revisit the ideal that I have already talked about, but that we don't always fulfill. I refer to a respect for equity, diversity, and a commitment to collegiality in the truest and fullest sense. We must do a better job of listening to and respecting everyone, both inside and outside the institution, not just in spite of our differences, but because of those differences. <clears throat> None of this will be easy. We will have to make some choices about what matters most and where to focus our energies. We will have to confront our differences and have difficult conversations. But we need to do this, not only to address our own institutional challenges, but also because society increasingly needs us to deliver what we have to offer. Imagine what could happen if we succeed in our mission. Teachers College would be fully focused and fully mobilized. We could be the place where our many disciplines, programs, and viewpoints have greater impact by finding common purpose. This can be our moment. Despite the challenges we face, the college is financially strong and academically rich. We have the reputation, the history, and the talent to achieve our goals. But it starts with choosing to be we. 
Now let me end by saying this. I want Teachers College to be a place where every single member of the community feels valued and respected. That goes for students and <laughs> now, now that goes for students and faculty and staff. That even goes for administrators. <laughs> All deserve the support, mentorship, assistance, and opportunities that they need to achieve their goals. Because I have faith in our goals and our people, I think that we can truly come, if we can truly come together as one community, that we as an institution can use our skills and our resources to help build pathways to success for every child, for every adult. That is our mission. Let's accomplish our mission. And let's do that and flourish together. Thank you.